And in this particular video, we're going to talk about a super common math mistake. And of course, you want to avoid this error or avoid making this error. So let's go ahead and see how well you do with these problems here. So uh, here we have an expression, a plus b over a, and here we have 3 plus 7 over 3. Go ahead and simplify each of these and go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Now I'm going to show you uh, the correct answer in just one second, but more importantly, I'm going to show you that common error I'm talking about, and then I'm going to look at more examples so you do not make this common error. This is really, really important. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so you're probably saying to yourself, well, hey, where's the answer? I just see the problem. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do something right now. So let's take this a plus b over a, and I'm like, oh, I got this a here, I got this a here, so the answer here would be b, and likewise, I got 3 plus 7 over 3, oh, I got two 3s here, so my answer is going to be 7. All right, so how many of you um, put uh, b and 7 as your answer? Okay, well, if you were able to do this problem and this was your answer, unfortunately, i got to give you a little sad face because that is incorrect. Hopefully, you didn't make that mistake. But if you did, especially on this uh, problem over here, uh, you are in good company because I would say almost all students uh, that I've been teaching for decades will make this error sometime in their math adventures. Okay, so don't feel so bad about this. And we're going to talk about why this is such a common error. Now, if you look um, at, well, first of all, let's just go ahead and answer the question. Uh, can we simplify this expression? And the answer is no. Okay, this is as simple as it can get. And that'll be uh, very clear if I put some parentheses around it. There's nothing I can do here. It's, this is written as simple as it could be in algebra. But here, I got 3 plus 7 over 3. Well, 3 plus 7, the last time I checked, is 10. 10 divided by 3. Well, that's a simpler way of writing 3 plus 7. So here, 10 divided by 3, if I cross-cancel those 3s like this, and I had 7, is 7 the same thing as 10 divided by 3? Well, obviously not. Okay, so hopefully you caught yourself there. But uh, anyways... Don't feel so bad, again, if you made this error. Okay, let's take a look at a couple examples. Uh, by the way, again, with this particular problem here, if you were going to simplify it, this would be a better um, answer than just leaving it as 3 plus 7 uh, over 3. All right, so again, uh, this is something you want to avoid, but let's take a look at some examples in algebra. Uh, that, you know, when students are working with uh, various terms, you know, there's variables going on, a big part of what you're trying to do in algebra is simplify things. And now, oftentimes you have to factor stuff and you got to reduce things down. You got to write, you know, things in their simpler form and it can get confusing. All right. And this, let's take a situation like this here. I have 3x squared plus x minus 9 over 3x squared. And for whatever reason, I'm sure I was making this, this, this mistake way back when I was taking Algebra 1 or whatever that was, way back in early 80s when all that new wave stuff was going on. It was pretty fun to grow up in the 80s. Anyways, I digress. So I'm pretty sure I was making this mistake because you're like, hey, I don't want to do any work. I see a 3x squared here. I see a 3x squared here. Let's just get rid of these guys and call our answer x minus 9. Well, there could be nothing uh, more wrong about doing this <laughs> procedure. This is wrong. It seems like I mean, it, it's, uh, it would be great if it wasn't because I'm like, oh, I got this. I could just take this and cross cancel with that. And here is the answer. But people are conf um, confusing uh, this, doing this with something else. And we're going to talk about that uh, something else right now. Okay. So when can you cross cancel things in mathematics? Well, you can only cross cancel like factors, okay? Factors, all right? So here is what a factor is, and here uh, is what a factor is not. So let's take a look at some numbers here. So let's say I have 10, okay? So 10 is the same thing as 9 plus 1, okay? But 10 is also equal to 2 times 5. So 
two and five are factors of 10. Two and, fives, two and five are factors of 10 because the product of two and five is 10. So specifically, factors involve multiplication. These are numbers that um, are being separated by multiplication very, very specifically. So nine plus one is 10. These are not factors. Nine and one are not factors of 10. Now, technically, one is a factor of 10, but you don't think as uh, numbers being separated by addition or subtraction. These numbers, th those numbers there are not factors, okay? You can only cross-cancel like factors, things that, again, are separated uh, by multiplication, and the product of these various numbers um, is this number, okay? And you can have all different sorts of numbers, like, say, 20, you can have more. 20 is the same thing as 4 times 5. So fa uh, factors of 20 is 4 and 5. But factors of 20 is also 2 times 2 times 5 as well. So here's three factors. These are what we call uh, prime factors of 20. But again, numbers being separated by multiplication. Okay. So let's go back real quick before I show you uh, some examples where we can cross cancel. Here, let's go back over here and I'll write it in my 3x squared again. So I have 3x squared plus x minus 9. These are not factors, okay? This is not a factor of this, this, and this. And I have numbers here. So you can't start assessing things just like in this problem. A plus B, these are not factors, okay? Because we're not being, uh, they're not separated by uh, multiplication. Likewise, like 3 and 7. But if I had A times B, that's a totally different ball game. So if you had A times B over A, then that can cross cancel the, it, those A's, and my answer would be B. Okay, so students just forget what a factor is. Now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, uh, situations where we can absolutely cross cancel like factors. Okay, so this is um, the major mistake that I was um, talking about is confusing what a factor is. But here we have 3x times 4y over 3x. So I have a factor, this, um, like factors, I have one factor in the numerator that's the exact same thing as the, we have that same factor in the denominator. So I can cross cancel one from one and whatever's left over is a simplified version of it. So let's take a look at this example, five times 2x minus one over five, well, five, this is five times this factor, okay? So this is five times this, this and this. This is a factor of what? Well, if we multiply this back in, I'm going to get 10x minus 5, okay? So if I factored, okay, the greatest common factor out of 10x minus 5, I would end up with five times uh, this quantity, 2x minus 1 over 5. And you want to factor because you're looking for like factors, 5 and 5 are like factors, I can cross cancel one five for another five, and you're left with two x minus one. Okay, so let's take a look at this fraction right here. Now again, I would I can get the uh, original problem here by just multiplying all these factors. Again, we're talking about factors, but here is the one thing you have to keep in mind when you are cross canceling like factors. So I have two, three, five, and seven, this is all multiplication. I have two times two times three, all multiplication, see these are all factors. We're looking to identify like factors. So here I have a two, I'm down here looking for a two. Oh, I got a two here. I have two twos, but here's the main thing. This one two can only cross cancel a, a one two. I can't uh, take out this two right here. You would need another two up there to cross cancel that two. So just remember when you're cross canceling like factors, it's one for one. So here I can cross cancel, this two can cross cancel that two. Here I have a three. Oh, I have a three right there, so I can cross cancel three, four, three. I have a five, seven, and I don't have any fives or sevens in the denominator, so the simplified uh, result would be five times seven, which of course would be 35 over this two right there that remains. And this is effectively what you do when you are simplifying or reducing a fraction you want to uh, factor the numerator and denominator and cross cancel like factors. But we do the same thing in algebra as well. That's why factoring is one of the most important skills you need to know in algebra. But more importantly, you don't want to make this common mistake as I'm um, uh, you know, kind of laid out. Now, how would I know that this is a common error? 
Well, for myself, I've been teaching math for decades and decades, and I've probably graded maybe 100 million different homework, tests, quizzes, exams. Well, not that much, okay? But you know what I'm talking about, right? Enough to see the trends. So even the best of students can make this error. It's just a natural type of thing. So the more you are aware and you have what we call situational awareness on tests and exams, uh, and most, most importantly, focus, then you can stay away from making these common errors. All right, if you need additional help with factoring and uh, simplifying all this kind of stuff, I'll suggest a couple of courses in my math help program. You probably want to check out something like my pre-algebra or algebra one course. I also have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel. But if this particular video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.